Welcome back to Copper Star Precision, the channel dedicated to getting you more points at your competitive shooting matches. Today we're continuing to go over the September 2024 NRL 22 Course of Fire. This is stage three in the booklet. It is called Riding the Bus. We have three tires. If you like these videos, don't forget to go down below, subscribe to this channel. Hopefully it'll help you score more points. If you'd like to use the dry fire targets that I use in these videos, they're available on my Patreon page. But without further ado, we've got three banks of targets, five targets total. I'll put the target sizes down here. And uh, stage description is as follows. On the start signal, build a position on the tire stack and engage targets near to far, large to small with one shot each. After five rounds have been fired, switch to support slash weak side and repeat the same engagement. And uh, option two on here, if you're doing option two, it's the same targets and distance, but 105 second par time and a mag change must be conducted. So think about that. So I think this is a relatively straightforward stage. Tires are always the wild card. Tires, there's no set dictated size, as long as they're a light truck tire between certain dimensions. Um, you know, they could be dry rotted. They are significantly wobbly, generally speaking. So it's all about timing that wobble. And then of course, support side does give people challenges if they haven't practiced that. So really what it comes down to, again, kind of like the barrel stage, I do like two points of contact. And uh, if again, if you don't have a uh, full length arc rail or the ability to slide your bipod up, much like the barrel stage, which I covered in stage one, if you haven't seen that video already, you know, a, a bag on the side here where we are going to place the rifle. Uh, if you're not using two points of contact, you don't even need the bipod on this stage, but you're gonna go two points of contact, probably some sort of kneeling position right trying to get stable here and if i'm a right-handed shooter i'm going to be on the right side of the tire okay and then in fact i would switch to support side instead of being out here in space here you can kind of you can kind of get in and use your non dominant hand on the tire putting your elbow on the tire and then grabbing the rifle and bag and you can kind of try and squeeze everything together to get it super stable so i'd recommend this and then when you switch to support side i would actually recommend you're going to use the one bag method doing a quick transition and then everything is opposite so left hand left eye and instead of this knee being up we're going to put our left knee up and then using this elbow here dig into the tire grab the rifle grab the bag and something like this find your eye box and then engage the targets this way and then here you know you can manipulate the bolt with the same hand by reaching under, some people reach over, but here you have enough, you have enough gap in here, generally speaking, so that you can keep your eye on target and you're not, you know, this works too, but then you're kind of losing your grip and then your, wobble, your rifle starts to get really wobble, wobbly. So that's what I recommend if you're gonna go for a one bag solution. Um, I'm gonna go two points of contact because that's what I'm more comfortable with and I have the gear I'm available to, to do it. So, kind of get an idea of where we're gonna line up here. And then you're not supposed to pre-stage any of the props during the match. What we can do is you can, with your rifle pointed in a safe direction down range, I can kind of put my rifle next to this, line this up with the back, and then I can make a mental note, like, okay, the bipod needs to be right about where my sunshade attaches to my scope. And now I know how to set my bipod before the stage so that I don't have to mess around with anything on the clock. So for me, you know, two points of contact, front and rear, technically three, because we have a bipod, so we're making a tripod, and a rear bag like that, rifle stays just where it's supposed to be, super simple. Um, and then again, near to far, so we're doing near to far twice. I would probably, if you're someone who struggles with time management, this might be a good opportunity to use holdovers on your strong side but i would advocate regardless dialing on the support side because it's even more difficult using your weak eye trying to find a holdover hold off in space all that kind of stuff so i you probably should have enough time if you're doing this to dial for every single target you just have to remember to dial back down because it's two sequences of near to far um, but you can use holdovers so it would be about 0.7 and 1.5 so i'll demonstrate that so I'll hold over on the strong side because I'm more comfortable with that. And then I'm going to dial when I'm on support side. That will save me a little bit of time. And yeah, that's really all there is to it. 
Um, just know your targets, know your order. You may have to adjust parallax as you go along between, let's see, 60 and 100 yards probably. If you zoom out your magnification, then you will have more depth of field and you'll have to make less parallax adjustments. So if you're about, I would say 12 to 15 power, depending on your scope, and you're parallax for that middle target around 80 yards, you're probably okay. Um, however, the near small target is only half a mil wide, so it is the most challenging of the bunch. So maybe you wanna be parallax for all targets. Um, zooming out for your support side will help you find the eye box easier because it gives you a bigger eye box. So I would suggest maybe doing that um, and hold and doing the dialing for a support side. As far as support side goes, I know a lot of people struggle with it, but honestly, you get behind the rifle, square to the rifle with your non-dominant eye, in my case, the left eye. I'm literally just looking at the target. I am looking at, in this case, my timer, send it level. I'm just, you know, I can even close one eye and I'm just trying to draw a line straight from the target all the way down to the top of the trigger cam. And then right now I'm in, uh, I can see, but I don't have the correct eye relief. So I need to scoot up a little bit and there I am. So really it's about just, you know, you do it subconsciously on your dominant side. You know, you come into the target and you're right there, right? But with your non-dominant eye, it's all about just with your left eye, and if you want, you can close your right eye and just, you know, follow a line. Target, top of turrets, to the scope, and then you should be there, especially if you want a decently zoomed out magnification. And then from there, it's just slight tweaks back and forth until you get that shadow on that eye box to uh, go away. So that's what I have for tips there. And uh, let's see what this looks like in practice. So... Timer goes beep, all gear in hand. Here I could probably take a standing position. Again, legs spread apart. We're gonna find our target. There is gonna be a wobble, making me dizzy over there. So we're just gonna take our time. That's one, two. We're gonna use holdovers, so let's go 0.7. Holding over 0.7. And then holding over 1.5. Embracing the wobble. And there we go. Now we switch to support side. We're still dialed for the first target. Again, closing my right eye, kind of just coming into the scope. I can see, I gotta adjust a little bit. All right, here, it's not as easy to do this technique, so I'll probably use my right hand. Again, embrace the wobble. Smallest target. All right, come on. just slightly off the scope, trying to keep my cheek weld where it is, dialing for the second target. Now these are straight up holds, no more holdovers because we dialed. Dial for the third. Again, trying not to break my cheek weld. And there we go. So relatively straightforward, of course, all of my uh, targets, probably had about 15 seconds left. All my targets in the same plane. I didn't have to adjust parallax. I didn't have to go searching for targets, anything like that. So obviously it's a little bit easier for me. Again, backing off that magnification does help find that eye box on your support side, find the targets. Now, of course, things are a little easier here. All my targets are in the same plane. I don't have to just parallax. They're all in the same location. So if you're traversing the range looking for targets, it's a little bit more difficult. But the core concepts and fundamentals remain the same. So hopefully that helped you. Again, I always advocate for multiple points of contact where possible. Or you can use that side bag strategy that I have if you want to go that route. Other than that, again, um, if you want to save a little bit of time, you can do holdovers for your strong side because you're more familiar with it. And then I would definitely advocate maybe dialing so you're holding straight up because it's hard enough it is to find that eye box, find that reticle, find the target with your weak side if you haven't practiced it. So holdovers for the first string of five, possibly, and then uh, dial for the second string of five. You could dial for the whole thing too. You should have time um, depending on how fast your target acquisition speed is. But with that being said, I hope these videos helped. If they do, let me know down in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel with all notifications enabled. And until I see you next time, as always.
score more points.